Hey, hey everybody, it's Friday and I am coming to you at a weird time. It's 2.30, usually I am at two o'clock and then I said I would be at three o'clock, but then I got home early. <laughs> so we're going with it, it's 2.30. It's time for Facebook Friday. I hope you guys can find me. Let's see if I can find me. I had an appointment today. It was one of those, the doctor will squeeze you in at noon on Friday and I was like, it's kind of hard to tell them I have Facebook Live. <laughs> But, and you know what, today she was super fast, on time, it was nice, so I got home in plenty of time. I just knew that if I did not bump today a little bit, that I would be late. Isn't that Murphy's Law? Um, if you do it, then it'll be fine, but if you don't do it, then you'll be late. Okay, let's see, I'm going to share you guys over, see where I'm at, see if I can see you. Hopefully you guys are having a good Friday. Hi, Joy. Hi, Cheryl. Good to see you guys. Patricia, Mary, I, I'm glad you guys found me. Thank you for being flexible with me today. Hopefully, if anybody's watching the replay because you missed it, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to get started kind of early because um, my kids are actually home today. Um, but my husband, when he comes home, I don't know, I'm so distracted when they're here. Like, I feel like I can't do this. <laughs> It's just weird. Um, if you haven't done a Facebook Live before, it's weird. Even after as many years as I've done it, it still feels strange and awkward. And so when there's people here and I'm just like talking to myself, it seems even more awkward. But that's what I wanna get done. So I think today we'll get done roughly an hour. We'll see. It's good to see you guys. I'm glad you all are finding me. I have six, six mini cut and emboss machines to give away. I'm so excited. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, we're going to make three Darling Donkey projects. And you guys, I can't get enough of this. And guess what? There's no special tools or supplies you need for this. You will probably have everything that you need to make this at home. I know that there are things you can order um, that do this, but you don't need them. You don't need them. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. So we're going to do that. Um, we've got two other donkey projects. I've got lots of announcements for you. Where shall I start? Okay, let's start here. Um, Paper Pumpkin this month is all Valentine. I got all of mine yesterday. I got a bunch of them. I've already sold half of them. If you need a Paper Pumpkin for um, January, I have them. Um, email me. Okay, email's the best. You guys, Facebook message, I am like, I don't know. I just... Email, I know, every day. Okay, I check it when I get up, I check it at lunch, I check it in the evening. But Facebook message, they like pop up, they disappear, I forget. So email, okay? Erica at pinkbuckery.com. Here's what it looks like. It's super duper duper cute. Valentine cards, eight. Here's the stamp set. Um, it goes, it coordinates with a little snail bundle. And this month there's a ribbon, a bolt of ribbon in here. I don't know how much is on the bolt, but I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, and the spot is Poppy Parade. So if you want them, they're $25 shipped. Message, email me. Email me, okay? You can message me, but I might not see it. Email me. Um, then there's this other little bonus called um, Little, little Love Boxes. Um, add-on. Now these you have to order over like you would a regular Stampin' Up! order. Um, Stampin'Up!.com, you click on subs kit subscriptions, then you scroll down, there's a little thing that says other or more from Paper Pumpkin, you click on that and it's there. And I have them, they look like this. Let me see, I have one for my, I ordered one for my mom. See, that's what they look like. And this is what they look like put together. They are about the size of a Tic Tac box, okay? Um, so it's not gonna take, whoops, it's not gonna take much for you to fill it. I think the mini Hershey chocolates fit in here, like two of them. Um, nug nuggets, maybe, Hershey nuggets, right, maybe. I'd have to try that, they might be too fat. But anyway, that's the add-on. So it coordinates with a paper pumpkin, it's $8. And it has, oh, it doesn't say, I don't know, how many boxes does it have? It says on that paper. Let's see. If you're like me and you like to do Valentine treats, what does it say? 20. So for $8, you'll get 20 of the boxes, the little 
uh, snail tags and the little die cut tags. Um, but if you're gonna want them for Valentine's Day, you need to order them pretty fast, okay? Oh, Carla, two Reese's hearts fit perfectly in there. That's a great idea. Do I have those? I don't think I've ordered, I don't think I've bought those yet. Um, two Reese's hearts. Don't you love when a treat box is cute and small and you don't have to spend $1,000 on candy to fill it? Candy is so expensive. So good, two little Hershey, so probably the little Dove chocolates, the two that I am totally, I cannot buy because I will eat them all. Those will probably fit in there too. So if you need a paper pumpkin kit, it's too late to subscribe, but I have a few extras. Um, but if you are a subscriber and you want the refill kit, you have to order that at stampinup.com. Um, and you have to be a subscriber to order the add-on kit, okay? Okay, let's see. I'm going to move you guys over here. And how about we do our drawing before I flip the camera over. Here's a little mini cut and emboss. And in case you haven't been around, I am almost, to, I'm about to hit my $1 million in sales. That is a huge deal in the Stampin' Up! world. It's a lot of work. It's taken me... 13 years to get there, 12 years. I can't remember now how long, but it's taking a long time for me to get there. Um, and it's a pretty big accomplishment. It's been a goal of mine for many years. So anyways, I'm real close to it. So as we get closer and closer, I decided to raffle off a mini cut and emboss machine for everybody who puts in an order every thousand dollars until we get there. So for reference, I am about one and a half mini cut and emboss machines away. <laughs> from my one million. So fingers crossed, uh, I feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe next week, maybe the first, we'll see. Anyhow, I have six of these to give away today. Um, that's a lot. So what's gonna happen, everybody who's ordered from me, since I announced this last week, your name is in this basket um, for every $50 you ordered. So if you put in a $100 order, your name is in here twice. Um, I'm going to leave your name in here until the final drawing. So every time you, you order, like, let's say you put in one order and then you put another order, I'm still, I'm keep adding your name. Okay. Thanks. Y'all are sweet. I appreciate that. It is exciting. Um, Stampin' Up! contacts you. They write an article about you. They've been asking me all these questions and, um, they sent me something yesterday that made me cry. It's just, it's really nice. It's really, it's, um, it's, it's nice. It is nice to, um, see your hard work pay off and to, you know, get celebrated a little bit, right? It's exciting. Um, <laughs> thanks, Mary. So anyway, your names are in here. Here's the deal. If I draw your name and you already have a mini cut and emboss, no worries. You can order something else for equal amount, okay? I'm just wanting to reward you guys for helping me get there. All right, are you guys ready? Six, okay? I'm going to draw six. And don't worry, if you're not here and you don't see it, I'm going to email you. First winner is Leah Jorgensen. Leah, it's gonna be backwards. Leah Jorgensen, woo -hoo! Okay, should I, could I turn it around? Should I, should I try it? Let's see, okay, hold on. Oh no, let's see, do I know how to do this? Okay, <laughs> let's see. I'm gonna draw another one, ready? Mary Vessels, look, is it backwards? It's still backwards, isn't it? Let's try it again. Is it backwards? There, there we go. Mary Vessels, number two. Mary, I'll be emailing you. All right, let's see who the number three one is. I can't see your comments because I have that little weird screen up. Oh, Kathy Hillard, Kathy. Her name's in here several times. Kathy, congratulations. And let's see who else. Martina, Martina, congratulations. I just, she just redeemed one of her um, reward cards yesterday. All right, Ashley Cranford. Woohoo! I just talked to her too. Ashley, congratulations. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five. Ready? One more for now. There'll be two more at least. I'll give away at least two more. Here is Karen Holman. Karen Holman. Congratulations. All right, you guys, so congratulations. Don't worry, if your name is still in here, it's gonna stay in there. Um, whoa, whoa, that's shaking. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna turn me back around. Oh my gosh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys, hold on, let me get these names, because I won't remember who it was. I'm gonna email all of you, and let's put this over here. 
and oh, oh is that gonna fall okay all right so i've got to save that make sure i don't get those mixed up mini cut nipples machine it's so cute you guys so so cute all right i'm gonna flip you guys around because i have a lot to show you i have a lot to show you now speaking of that giveaway i'm still doing the until i hit my million everybody who orders 50 dollars or more will get today's make and takes this month's all-star tutorial bundle a free embellishment and your name in the drawing okay so you have until i hit my million which i really think will be at the very end of next week probably or the beginning of the following week unless somebody orders something gigantic in the next few days <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I'm going to flip you guys around. So hold on. It's very exciting. And it's funny because when I talk to my husband about it, he's very supportive. He's always been extremely supportive. But he doesn't really get how many stamps, ink, and paper that is to equal a million dollars. He is a salesman himself. He sells, uh, well, floor panels and wall trusses. Floor tr I don't know components that builders you know when you see a house being built and it's the wood frame his company makes all that and he sells that so obviously their stuff costs way more so when I tell him a million dollars to him that doesn't sound like very much and he'll say well and I'm like don't compare our stamp sets are only twenty dollars <laughs> it takes a lot more stamp sets to get to a million dollars than it does floor trusses no he he's very supportive he just you know guys okay Let's talk about a few things. We're gonna talk about our little donkey here in a minute. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. Um, the starter kit, let's talk about the starter kit. I have had several of you take advantage of the starter kit. Um, the starter kit is $99. When you buy the starter kit, that means you become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Does that mean you have to do what I do and sell a million dollars in stamps? Absolutely not. Majority of people buy the starter kit to support their own habit. That means they want a discount. Um, that means they want early access to catalogs. They want to be able to put their own orders in. They want to maybe sell some things to their friends, right? That's how I started. I had teacher friends who wanted to learn how to do what I was doing. And so I became a demonstrator so that I could buy the good supplies from Stampin' Up! and teach them how to make the things that I was making. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, you might also want to buy the starter kit because then you're on my team and you get special discounts. Um, well, not really discount. Yeah, I guess discounts. My PDFs are free to my downline and my class kits are discounted to my downline. Um, they get them basically at cost. So lots of perks. A starter kit is, where did I just put that catalog? The starter kit is always $99. It's anything that you want in the catalogs, okay? Anything that you want from the regular catalogs. Um, and you get $125. You pick up to $125, and then you only pay $99 in tax, no shipping. So you get $125 in product, and you get these. And these... While they may not be all that impressive just laying here, let me just tell you, they're so awesome. These are one of probably my top five products of Stampin' Up! are our color designer series paper packs. There are pattern paper for every one of Stampin' Up!'s colors. It, these just make creating so easily. If you're using, say you're using like this um, hydrangea paper right here, and you need a little bit of something else, you can pull out the color um, family that goes with it and it will coordinate with the other paper. So these are super good. I use them constantly. I'm like a hoarder of these. Um, but anyway, in the starter kit right now during celebration, you get one, you get the brights, the neutrals, the subtles, the regals, and the end color. So that's five packs. It's about 60 something dollars in value. You get that for free. And the other thing about these is that these are new. These will be in the next annual catalog. You can't even buy these right now. So if you are interested in the starter kit, let me know. You can actually go over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, click the tab at the top that says join and read all the details. I promise you, I will never pressure you to do anything more with your starter kit than you wanna do, but I will help you if you need help, want help, whatever. Um, but it's a great deal, and I can't just—I just can't let you guys not know about it. Okay. All right, the All Star Tutorial Bundle. This is also something my downline gets for free. 
I am a part of this awesome group of ladies who, well, and gentlemen too, um, 12 demonstrators from around the world. We pick a suite each month. We each design a project and we type up this tutorial and we record a video for each project. You get this for free when you spend $50 or more from me at staffinup.com. Okay, that's not anything else. It, it's just product orders. Um, you can also get it as a subscription. If you are already a demonstrator yourself or you have a demonstrator and you don't want to order from me, no problem. It's in my PDF store always for $15. Or you can subscribe. And this is the only month subscriptions are open. We only open it once every six months. When you subscribe, it's $15 every month. And then the sixth month is free. So you're actually getting six of them for the price of five. You can pay monthly or you can pay um, in one, you know, one lump sum. This is done next, next, when is the 31st? Sunday? Next Sunday? Or do we have longer? What's today? Yeah, next Sunday. So you really have, what, like nine days left. The subscription window is open for nine days longer, okay? If you're interested in that, it's on today's blog post. And today's PDF, the information is there as well. Right here, you can click that link. Um, I think it's at the bottom of today's blog post. Just click it and that'll give you the information, okay? If you have questions about it, just ask me and I will be happy to let you know. All right, next up. How about that hydrangea stuff? Just This is just a little sneak peek. This is next month's class to go. Be on the lookout next week. It's coming, okay? I just wanted to give you a little da, 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 sneak peek, but we're not ready for that yet. Just a little heads up. Um, next, I want to tell you about Club Create. Next month is the Sweet Strawberry Bundle. Um, Club Create is a, is a different subscription. It's actually a product kit subscription from me. Um, I put the kits together every month. They come with $20 of product and five projects, PDF and a video. Um, so next month we'll be doing the Sweet Strawberry and you're also going to get, along with that $20 in product, next month you're going to get some celebration paper in there as well as you can see. This uh, subscription is open until February 7th. That Those details are right here. All right. And that PDF, I don't know if I have put the PDF for this out yet, but it'll be out soon. All right. So there's that. Oh my gosh, I'm messing up my donkey. He's... He's like bent over here. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Um, let's see. I already told you about paper pumpkin, the little kit, add-on kit. We don't need that. We can throw that away. Uh, I think that's it, except for door prizes. I haven't been watching what you guys are saying. Sunny Minnesota, Kathy, my husband was in Minnesota this week for work, and he said it was so cold, you know, being from South Texas. We don't do well with so cold, but I'm glad to hear it's sunny. I can handle cold if it's sunny. Okay, winners, winner, 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 chicken dinner. Where does that saying come from? I have no idea. I say it all the time and then I don't even know what that's from. Last week's winners, I picked two people at random who shared the video. Donna Schneez, Schneez, Donna, I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Um, Donna, I think I probably have your mailing address, but email me just in case, okay? And Cricket Meyer, you both are the winners of a hot dog stamp set. I will get that into the mail for you ASAP. As soon as I hear from you, Cricket, I do not have your mailing address, I don't believe. This week I'm giving away this one. It's really cute. A cut above. Uh, it makes me it, like think of summer. Oh, can't wait for summer. I always get about mid-January, I start to get that itch. Even though I hate summer here because it's so hot, I do love summer. <laughs> I love June. After that, it's just miserable, but I do love June. Anyway, I will give these away next week. All you have to do is share the video on Facebook and I'll pick two people at random. And if you put in the comments shared, um, that way I know, because if you share a video, I don't always necessarily see it when I click on the shares. It's weird. I don't understand it. But if you type in the comments shared, then I will put you in the drawing. Okay. All righty, let's see, am I missing anything? Uh, Robin, that dog set is cute. I know, it's very cute. Oh, Florida, Susan, I bet it's nice and warm down there. 
All right, we're ready. If you have never joined me for Facebook Friday before, I usually pick a product. This week it's Darling Donkeys, and we make three projects with it. This is kind of like my weekly class, and the projects are free with an order, free with a purchase, just like I would do locally at my local card class. Um, you will get these three make and takes for free. I will mail them to you next week. Um, if you put in an order between now and Monday at midnight, I cut them Tuesday morning. Every Tuesday morning is reserved for cutting Facebook Friday projects and they go out Wednesday morning. Um, you need to use a host code. All right. And I will flip that down right here. Here's the host code. It's the same as last week's. It's also on the PDF. It's on today's blog post. Um, and I think if you click the shop now button on my blog in the blog post, now I'm double thinking mm, that may all automatically add that host code. The website's been doing some weird stuff. You guys, when you're shopping, whether it's with me or another demonstrator, you need to make sure that it says who you're shopping with because our new website is changing people's demonstrators like weird. You know, if you look at somebody's card on Pinterest and they go to their blog and then you click a product link on their blog, it's going to change you, change who your demonstrator is that you're shopping with. And some people have been caught off guard with that. So just make sure if you're, you know, shopping with somebody in particular that you look and make sure their name or whatever is on there. If you use a host code, it will work. You won't have to worry about it. Okay, so make sure you use a host code. They come like this. The only thing you'll need for this week's projects are the donkey set, your inks, um, and that's it. I will send you all the die cuts and the punches and the scored paper and the envelopes and everything. I'm just looking. That you Sometimes you need a die or a punch, but not, I don't think this week. They look like this and they come. And you'll get a free embellishment too if your order is over $50. And, you know, it's really easy right now to spend $50. I mean, it's always easy to spend $50, but <laughs> um, right now during celebration, you get something free with a $50 purchase. And the Darling Donkeys is what we're doing today, and he's they are only free. You can't actually buy them. You can only get them for free, all right? Um, I'm just looking at comments. Did I miss something? No? Okay. Um, anyhow... That's where he is. Look how cute he is. Have you guys looked? Look, there's like a little, like a little barn or something. Have you guys seen the Darling Donkey on Pinterest? I was looking and seeing how people were coloring them. And what I found is that donkeys come in a variety of colors and everything. So we're going to start off with making our donkey we're going to watercolor it, okay? So let me unpack here my tray and we will get started. We're using a blending brush again, which I believe are now on back order. Um, the last I checked, they are on back order, but you can still order them. I think it's just February 1st. They're expected um, back. Okay, are we ready? I think we are ready. That PDF on today's post is under the third picture. Um on my blog. There's a link, click it, you'll get this. It has all the products that I'm using and the measurements that you need for each project. All right, so you this is free. You can save it, download it, print it, whatever you want, but just don't feel like you have to frantically write everything down as I am showing you. All right, so let's start with our donkey um, on this one because he's gonna need to dry. If you Google donkeys, you guys, they're going to come up and they're look to me in my mind. I think of a donkey as gray, but actually they're brown. Um, most of them, the pictures that I saw were brown. So that's where I started with this card. This was the first thing that I made. I'm going to stamp him not in memento. You know, when we use stamp and blends, we stamp in memento, but when we watercolor, we use stays on. It is not water soluble. Soluble? It's not water-based. <laughs> and uh, the ink, the water, will not make it smear. We're going to color him with cinnamon cider ink. That's one of our ink colors. And I've got some paper towels. I've got our water painters. These are our new water pens. And look, that one looks like it was leaking. It's open. Oh, but nothing's wet. Wouldn't that be awful if I pulled it out and everything was wet? Um, let's see. I think we'll use this one. 
I'm gonna just take a block and put my dab my ink on it like that. And I'm gonna squeeze my water painter just a little bit so some water comes out. And actually, you know what I wanted to do first before that? Let me get this nice and wet. I'm gonna come over here and just kind of prime him with some water. That way, when I, sometimes when you are watercoloring and you go straight to dry paper, it leaves like a real hard line of color. But if you get it wet, it should not do that. And when you see how, when you set the color down, you know what, let's see if I can zoom in, hold on. I'm always scared that I'm gonna end the video by doing this. It won't let me do it, there we go, there we go. And it's shaking, there we go. So when you prime it, also when you set the color down, it's also just gonna kind of blend out and go where you put that water. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly color him with cinnamon cider and I always get out of the out of the lines when I watercolor. I'm not <laughs> you know, it's just it's kind of a a loose technique. I just can't stay, you know, real nice and neat with it. But we have to fussy cut him anyway, so I'm not too worried about getting out of the lines because we'll just cut it all off. All right, so we're going to paint him. He's very cute. I love this set. This is absolutely my favorite set in the Celebration catalog. It was the first thing that jumped out at me. All right, I'm going to go back with some more color and come down here to make him a little bit darker on the bottom. Down here. All right. And down here under his neck, we'll add some color. Okay. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because... We want him to dry, and if I keep adding, it's gonna take a long time for him to dry. But he looks pretty cute, doesn't he? All right, put that over to dry. Wipe that off. And now we'll make the background of, um, oh, Lois, I'm glad you asked that. Thank you, it's watercolor paper. I should have mentioned that. When you are using um, a water painter, when you're watercoloring, you need to either use watercolor paper or our, uh, shimmer white cardstock. I'm going to try to zoom back out now. Let's see. There we go. Um, because regular white will pill, you know, it kind of like tears the cardstock. I'm glad you asked that. I meant to say that. Okay, now we're going to do the background of this card. I've got a cinnamon cider card base. Let's see if I can make some room here. And I'm using one of our basic pattern masks. And you can, you know what, I think we will. You can get your grid paper and line your card up with the grid paper and then just kind of stick it down. This is post-it tape. It's awesome. Get it from Amazon. And then you can kind of just put this on here, line it up over here on the side with the grid paper as well. I think I'll put a little post-it on that as well. And there. Now, get your blending brush and we're just going to blend all the way oops that's not sticking we're going to blend all over the card front cinnamon cider ink on cinnamon cider cardstock cinnamon cider I can't for some reason every time I go to type that I cannot type it I cannot spell it right every time it's a hard one for me I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why. I've told you guys before that spelling is my weakness. I have kind of an insecurity about spelling from, from when I was a kid. Woo, that moved again. Um, and cinnamon is just one of those words that gets me every time. Karen, you like post-it tape too? It's the best. All right, now let's see. Let's pick it up and see how that looks. These will be a little bit darker. So what I can do is I can put that back down I'm gonna line it up. I can see my dots, so no problem. I'm gonna come up here and do a little bit more. All right, now look at my hands. Good thing I have a paper towel. All right, let's see how that looks. There, that's better. All right, so we've got that. Let's move that. We're gonna do a piece of white as well because we're gonna punch a heart out of it. Now, I'm not gonna to worry too much about it because I just need to do a little bit of a little bit of it. So we'll just kind of set that like that. Get some ink, 
just come over here and do one side. There we go. That's pretty. It looks kind of pinky to me, this color, when it's on the white. These brushes, if you haven't seen them before, they um, look foam on the video when I'm using it. They always look foam, but they are like thousands of fine bristles. They're really nice. And you get three of them in a pack. Okay, so let's move all of this out of the way. And let's start putting our card together. All right, I pulled, I actually did. You guys, if you are wondering about colors, color combinations, you can always Google um, like cinnamon cider. Cinnamon cider color combo. Um, and you will find lots of images of color combinations. So that's what I did here. I wanted to use kind of a pink color. So I looked up color combinations and I found early espresso and petal pink with cinnamon cider as a suggestion and I really liked it. So that's how I came up with this little grouping of colors. All right, this is the prized peony designer series paper from the annual catalog. I'm gonna adhere it to a piece of petal pink cardstock, And we're gonna put that on our card front. <laughs> You, who said that, Donna? I was, I was trying to say I can't stamp without getting inky. Same. Yesterday, I recorded all of these videos as clean recordings yesterday. So in case you come back to watch them, you can go to YouTube and just watch the individual projects. But um, I did this project first, and then I went to do um, the other ones, and my hands <laughs> looked awful. I actually had to stop and go try to scrub it all off because it looked awful. All right, so I've cut out an early espresso scalloped square. It's the largest one. This is a piece of that designer series paper. Here's what I was showing you at the beginning that you get free in your starter kit. This is this year's patterns. This is from the neutral stack. This is early espresso. And I'm gonna put that right there. And you know, I just was thinking, I ordered th several more packs of that because I knew for make and takes I was gonna need it. And I just realized when I got the box yesterday, there was three packs of the Sunflower DSP that I know I didn't order. And I kept thinking, oh, what did I mean to order? And I couldn't think of it. And just now I realized that's what I meant to order. So I'm going to have to order that for all the make and takes. Darn it. I hate when I do that. I do that frequently. All right. Now I have cut two strips of... Um, cinnamon cider they are just a quarter inch by three and three fourths and I'm gonna cut two that one's probably not even thin enough I'm gonna cut two thin foam adhesive sheet strips to put on them just very very thin and I'm gonna put that on there and there you go. Yes, you can use that. Also, um, coconut oil. I have coconut oil in my bathroom. That takes ink off really well um, as well. Coconut oil. Coconut oil also take off spray paint. <laughs> if you ever have spray painted and you have paint all over you, it will take spray paint off. All right, so we've got those there. Now let's do our little heart. This heart was punched out with the solid heart punch from the hearts punch pack we'll put that there we're going to stamp the little sentiment this is also from the donkeys and i think i stamped it in early espresso last time but we're going to do cinnamon cider you're the best and i'm just going to do it on the left side because i'm going to cut it right there hopefully that is straight enough and we will put that right there, right to the edge. All right, now we just need our little donkey. And like I said, fussy cutting. Jen, Jenna says shampoo works well too. All right, all right. Yeah, I know, you know, if I wash my hands just with regular soap, it doesn't take too much ink off. But if I actually take a full shower, it comes off. So it must be the shampoo. <laughs> it must be the shampoo. All right, so fussy cutting. I know. I'm hearing the grumbles. Some of you don't like it. I get it. I understand. 
but sometimes it's just necessary. For this guy, usually I say, leave a little cloud, a white cloud around him. But because I got out of the lines with the ink, I'm gonna stay really close to that black line. So you can decide, do you wanna be nice and neat with your ink and keep it in the line? Or do you just wanna be messy and then cut really carefully with your scissors? If you're gonna fussy cut, you wanna get a very sharp and small pair of scissors. These are our paper snips. They're awesome if you don't have them. They make great haircut scissors too, by the way. Um, don't ask me how I know that. And you're just gonna go slow and use the hand that is not cutting. So I am using my right hand to cut. I'm using my left hand to turn the paper. I'm not really turning the scissors so much as turning the cardstock. All right, so we're just gonna go around and around. Around and around we go. You know, sometimes they bring out new dies that they'll say, surprise, we have dies for that. I wish they would do that for this. Don't, I'm not, I don't have any insider information. I don't know anything. So don't say, Erica said, no. That was just me having wishful thinking, but it would be nice. I don't know if, if you guys were around during last celebration, they did that with a little frog. What else? Something else, I can't remember. Oh, the birthday cake. All right, there he is. Now, I have a little bit of some white there. I'm not sure what I did there. So I'm gonna take that aqua, nope, that water painter and just see if I can just touch it up a little bit there. Touch that up. Okay. And now we'll put him on with a ladybug set. That's right. Ooh, the ladybug set, Joanne. Yeah, that was a good one. The host set. There we go. All right, last but not least, we have coordinating ribbon, cinnamon cider. So, of course, I'm going to use the cinnamon cider ribbon. And we're going to make a little bow. This is great, just basic ribbon that coordinates with our colors. If you're new to Stampin' Up, that's the thing that we really are known for is our color coordination. So cinnamon cider is this brown. You'll find cinnamon cider ink. You'll find cinnamon cider paper. You'll find markers. You'll find ribbon, embellishments, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so last but not least, I'm going to add a few of these little cinnamon cider dots right there. And... There you have it, card one. What do you guys think? Really cute, and I like the dots in the back. It kind of adds, you know, a pattern without really having to use your designer series paper. Um, and I pulled paper from two, two different packs, the, the neutrals pack and that peony flower, flower pack. Peony, peony. You know what I'm talking about. That paper from the annual catalog. Okay, I'm going to clean up my mess, and then we're going to make that really cute card with the moving, with the wiggly um, donkey. Hold on. Let me get all the trash out of the way. Gosh, I still have things here from a few videos ago. This stuff stuck to the table. Sometimes those... You put adhesive sheets on the back of something, you'll find the little pieces all over the place. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm glad you like it. All right. I have been so excited to show you this card. I could hardly stand it. I made it a couple of weeks ago, and I cannot wait to show you. He is wobbly, and I know that there are there's a product out there that I had many years ago that had ordered from somewhere that is something that you can put on your card to, to do this effect. I don't have those. I didn't even know what they were called, whatever. And I wanted to make this right then. <laughs> so I started messing around with things that I have. And we're actually going to use wire, and I'm going to show you how to make that spring yourself. Okay? And that's all it is. As soon as I saw this stamp set in the catalog, this is what I wanted to do with it. I could not wait to do this. All right, let me bring everything over. I'm using several stamp sets here. 
I love to look in my stamps and pull things out to coordinate with whatever I'm using. So that's what we're doing here. Um, the wildly grateful, isn't that the perfect sentiment? The wildly grateful sentiment is from Lovely You stamp set. The little hearts are from the Always in My Heart stamp set. And the mud the splatter is from Painted Poppies. There's lots of stamp sets that have things that could be um, mud um, or dirt or splatter or whatever. And there's lots of heart stamps. But if you want the wildly grateful, that's from Lovely You. All right. We're going to make the little spring first um, because it needs some time to dry. Actually, I have one that I've made set aside, but I'm going to show you that first. You're going to need some wire, and I played around with a lot of different wire. I even tried a close, I mean, a paper clip, and it was too thick. So this is 26 gauge. Thank you, Mom. She's on here. I borrowed this from her. It's just wire. I have wire. I just didn't have 26 gauge. It's really light, and, it, and it's... Um, it's thin and it is going to do what you want it to do. So you're going to just take a piece of this. Let's see. I'm not going to use my ribbon scissors, but I am going to use my paper snips. Look away if this bothers you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. All right. So just cut a piece. You're also going to need two little shapes. It could be circles. It could just be two squares that you cut from cardstock. It doesn't have to be circles. Um, then you want to get something that you can wrap this wire around. I'm going to use my take your pick tool and you're going to wrap it around and make a spring. Okay. There we go. And really all you need, well, I guess I better go all the way around. Really all you need is about three little curly cues like that. All right. And a hot glue gun will be fine. But guess what? Tombow works as well. That's what I use because, again, I was impatient and I um, didn't want to wait. You know, when I get an idea in my head, forget it. I'm not going to wait. All right, so get this bottom and the, the top, the bottom and the top coils. You want to get them pretty flat. All right. And you're going to put Tombow on your circle. You're going to stick that in there. And then get Tombow. Oh, darn it, I forgot to tell you something. On that, well, you know what? We can make that the top. On that bottom circle, this is something I didn't do the first time. See how you can see the white circle? Well, I thought what we probably should stamp the white circle with mud splatter so then it blends in. Now, can you see that there? So before you do the coil, get your splatter. Floral Wire Mom, is that what it's called? You can get it at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, whatever. Um, so I stamped off Soft Suede, and I'm just going to stamp that on there like that. So that way it'll really blend in with what's going on in the card. So then put some glue here. I probably need a little bit more. You're going to need to give it some time to dry if you're using Tombow, obviously. And then just set it on there like that. All right. Now, I don't want to pick it up, but I have a dry one. <laughs> See that? Look at that. I mean, probably if you buy it, if you don't have the wire, you go buy it. You probably want to do the silver. It probably would be less visible. Not that it really matters. Um, but anyway, that's what it looks like. So put it off to the side. Oh, look, it's almost, it's already sticking together. Can you guys see? All right. So let's put that over there. And let's make the card. We're going to make the front and the inside because this is an early espresso um, card. We can't write on the inside. So we're going to do some stamping on a white piece and we're going to adhere that on the inside. Okay, so I'm just going to take that little mud splatter and do that there. I'm also going to do it. I'm going to stamp off for the front soft suede. I'm going to do it there. And then we'll get Flirty Flamingo and our little hearts. And we'll put some hearts there. And maybe down here. And then this is for the inside. So we'll add a few hearts there. OK. 
Okay, now where's my early espresso ink? I'm gonna grab it on the other tray. We're gonna stamp wildly grateful down here. And then <laughs> the hee haw. Hee haw. I can't I can't say it without saying it that way. Hee haw, who would have thought that we would ever find a a way to use that stamp. It's so funny. Okay, so there we have those two pieces. We'll put those in here and just, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do it and then we'll do the donkey glass. I'm gonna put this piece on the inside. It's in the floral department, Mom, the wire. I have bought wire before and I can't remember where I got it and what department. Maybe it is the floral department. All right, now you can also, oh, you can also get on Amazon, $6.99. I linked it on today's blog post. I meant to tell you guys that. That wire, $6.99 on Amazon. If there's a link on today's post. I totally forgot to mention that. All right, here's a piece of our, oh, no, no, hold on, hold on. I'm doing that wrong. We need to put this one on first. We've got the Tasteful Textures designer series paper. Tasteful textures, tasteful, is that what it's called? Tasteful textures. It's from the annual catalog. And then I've got also here a stitched scallop border um, that was cut with the Be Mine heart, stitched heart dies in Flirty Flamingo. And then I've got this one inch strip here of that wood grain designer series paper. And look, it totally blends in with my table. I'm gonna put that there. All right, so now we'll come over here and put this on with some dimensionals. Sandy Walmart has it too, probably. Yeah, our, our Walmart has a pretty good craft department. I bet you're right. I was thinking maybe even like a hardware, hardware store, hardware department. But if you don't wanna go anywhere, just order it on Amazon. I do believe it was like next day. If you're impatient like me. <laughs> I was very impatient. I couldn't wait to make it. Okay, now let's make our little donkey. Where did my white piece, here it is. This time I'm gonna stamp him just on our basic white cardstock in Memento. Is it on the other tray too? It is, let me grab it. And we're gonna color him, this time we're gonna color him, we'll color um, crumb cake. And we're gonna use Stampin' Blends. All right. So let's see if I can zoom in again. I wish I had a remote that would just zoom. I know there's software to do it, but I don't like it. All right, he is cute. I think he's very cute. Um, a donkey isn't necessarily something I would think would just be so cute, but he is, they are, all of them. All right, I'm gonna start with light crumb cake. And I'm gonna just go all the way around, leaving kind of a white circle there towards the middle because I want that to be the lightest. You know, I wonder if you colored him black and white striped, if he would then look like a zebra. I guess he would need more of a mane. Don't they have a mane? He doesn't really have a, well, I guess donkeys do too, don't they? I have a little bit one right here and that one kind of looks striped turn him into a zebra but we have a zebra stamp so I guess you don't really necessarily have to do that all right now I'm going to come back with my dark and I'm going to go around the outside with the dark and I'm going to do his little hooves down here a little bit there around the bottom there and then oh you know I was going to do his ears pink oh well we'll do a dark I have petal pink I was going to do that with I forgot all right, now I'm just gonna take my light and I'm gonna color, I'm gonna pull all that color up to this white spot right there and just very lightly go over it so that it's mostly light there on his back. Bring all that color up and give him a little darker muzzle or nose or whatever you wanna call it. Zebras have shorter ears. Okay, all right. Uh, he does have pretty big ears, doesn't he? Now, they have donkey zebras, right? They do. I've seen it. Who was it? I saw a celebrity being interviewed recently. They had on their property. Who was it? 
they had on their property a donkey zebra. It was a zebra that, you know, had a date with a donkey. <laughs> and he had some stripes and he looked like a donkey. Yeah. Am, am I crazy? Do you guys, have you heard of that before? Oh my gosh. Failing the wonky donkey. If you guys have not seen that video of that Scottish grandmother reading the wonky donkey to her child, look it up. The wonky donkey. We have that book too. I actually ordered it for my husband one year because he loves a Scottish accent. My husband loves to do accents and, um, it, we love Outlander, which is Scott. Oh, I need to zoom out. Oh my gosh. Um, oh no. What did I do? Hold on, you guys. Something happened. Are you still there? You guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, that's what I'm afraid of when I zoom. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, get off. Don't close. Don't close. Okay. Everyone just hold, please. There we go. Oh, my gosh. We almost had a disaster. Close your eyes. Don't open them yet. Don't look. I try to zoom out, and I hit something weird. Okay. I think all is good. At least we're not doing that weird looping this week. That was bizarre last week. That was super bizarre. Anyways, the wonky donkey, look him up. Little Scottish grandmother reading it. So cute. Very, very cute. That was, I don't know, maybe two years ago, a year ago. I don't know. 2020 seemed like five years. So who knows? It could have been last year. All right, I'm going to fussy cut him, and this time, you know, you can just leave that little white cloud, which I haven't been doing because I've just been talking. When I say leave a little white cloud, I mean just do this. Stay on the outside of him like this and leaving a little white border because he's going to be mounted on a white background, and so that is going to blend in with that white background. All right, so look, when you put him on there, the white just fades away. You can't really even see the white. Okay, so now we've got our little wonky donkey. Okay, I've got to trim this. It's going to drive me crazy. That is difficult though. Going in between that tail. Uh, let's see if I can do it. There we go. We've got our little mechanism. You don't need to buy anything except maybe some wire. If you don't have any wire, go ask your husband sometimes. Um, my husband had some wire. It was too thick. Um, and you just curl it and just make a spring yourself. Punch out a couple of little circles or little squares and make your spring. All right, so I'm going to glue that down right there. Let's bend up that. Hello, Mac. No, you can't eat any candy. Mac has come to say hello. I thought he was quarantined upstairs with the girls. And then I'm going to glue this guy right here. Now I'm going to let it dry, but then I can kind of just push it down so it's a little bit further. And there he is. And now you know how to make your own little spring and not necessarily, not only for your, for your um, donkey, but also for, you know, you could do it with your zebra, with whatever. What other stamps do we have? The little rabbit. There's all kinds of things. So what do you guys think? Easy, right? So easy. I was so excited. Sometimes I have a, you know, I make a project that I love so much that I can barely stand to wait to show you. And this one I made a couple of weeks ago and I had to wait. It was, it was hard. <laughs> I'm glad you like, liked it. Um, good. I'm, I am uh, reading y'all's comments. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And, and you know, like I said, I didn't want to wait for my hot glue gun to heat up. I was very impatient. I wanted to make it right then. And the um, Tombow Blue works just fine. It works just fine. Okay, one more project and then we're done. Done for this week. This time I have a 3D project for you. And I found these on Amazon. I don't remember what I was looking for, but this was one of the suggested treats, you guys. And oh my gosh, I had to order them. Have you guys seen these? Biscolata? It sounds like maybe it's something from Europe. I don't know. It does. I've never heard of these. There was some other ones that I bought too that you'll see probably in the future. I linked them today on Facebook. I mean, on my blog. This is what they look like. And they're delicious. In fact, let's just open one so you can see how cute they are. Little cookies with stars. Look, how cute, like a little shortbread cookie. How many are in here? One, two, three, 
four, five, six. So cute. All right, so I made a little box for that. And notice the whole box is empty. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, mom, raise your hand. Mom's guilty. She ate some. And my kids. And I ate one. That's it. And I spread it over several days. You guys would be proud of me. I didn't eat it all in one day. <laughs> okay. We're going to make this box. Now, oh, I'm going to show you what we're going to make. This box, I decided to do it a little different and do like a clamshell box. So it opens like that. Okay. Remember our, our old uh, wood cases, our wood stamp cases? They were, um, they called them clamshells. So that's why I always call that clamshell because it opens like that. And then this is a little, oh, here come the dogs. Who let you guys out? Who is that? <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm almost done, honey. All right, so it has a little belly band that slides up and down, okay? All right, now the one caveat about this project is that you're gonna need 12 by 12 cardstock to make this. So this is 12 by 12 basic white. Um, the original, the um, original, what am I saying? The measurements, it starts out as um, 11 and 3 fourths by 5 and a fourth. You're going to score the long side. And remember, all of this is over on the PDF today. You can just click it. Um, <laughs> Debbie, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to lose the COVID-10 that found me in 2020. So I had to spread it out. Yeah, I, I know. I was pretty proud of myself. Um, <laughs> that's funny. We're going to score the long side at one and three fourths, five and six and ten. And then turn it to the short side and score it at one and three fourths and three and a half. All right. Now grab your bone folder. Oops. And let's make all those nice and crisp. Whoa. I almost created my own new score line there. If you have um, other colors of 12 by 12, you could use those as well. I just decided to do this because I really wanted to use this paper. This is the Field and Flower Designer Series paper. That is wrong. That is not right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's not right. It's not five and six. It's five and. I did this the last time. It does say five and six. All right. Hold on. I know that's wrong. Let me check my notes video yesterday. I must have typed it wrong. Yep, six and three-fourths. So we're going to pretend that that line is not there, okay? Everybody just pretend it's not there. If I was going to give this to somebody, I would start with a new piece, but we're not going to do that. So we did this one at five. This one needs to be six and three-fourths. That's because this section and this section and this section all need to be the same, one and three-fourths. All right, let's see if I can make this with that rogue score line. Okay, there we go. We're gonna pretend that's not there. Grab your scissors and on the long side, you're gonna cut all of the score lines up to the horizontal score line. Then you're gonna cut corners, but on the ones on the outside, you're just gonna cut this, whoops, this one corner like that. Right, leave that side straight. But here, we're gonna cut these corners. And it looks like, I'm gonna trim this, cause see, I cut on the inside of that score line and that's gonna be a problem. There we go, hopefully. All right, we're gonna cut this one. I start rushing at the end and start making mistakes. Um, again, I did make separate recordings of these yesterday. They're on YouTube now. If you come back to make any of these projects, you can watch those. They are quicker and have less chit chat than Facebook Live. Um, and they will be on YouTube. They're linked under each photo today on my blog. They're also my dress rehearsal. <laughs> I like to do those because then I work out all the kinks. If I have wrong measurement, if I have, um, if I forgot something, then I get it worked out. Of course, it didn't, doesn't help if I type things wrong. Okay, so here we have it. We're going to fold these guys in. We're going to put adhesive on the outside, actually, of all of those squares. And I'm going to use Tombow. For all my Tombow lovers out there, you're going to be like, what? What? 
yeah, I'm using Tombow. I know. I thought it worked so well for the donkey. Let's use it now. All right, now you're gonna fold these in, and I do not want that to touch the table. Fold these in and match them with the edges over here. When I have Tombow, I really do like to use Tombow in boxes because it will be a permanent hold. It will not pop open. I like to get little clothes pens and just hold them closed until they're completely dry. All right, so do that and clip. Of course, now my fingers are gonna be stuck together. That's why I don't use Tombow, but we won't talk about that. Now, one of these sides needs to be glued into this. It doesn't matter which side, just one of them. So fold that like that, fold it in, and line up those edges. There we go. Doop. And do. So you can see how that's going to close. All right. So we'll let that dry. We'll bring it back over in a minute. This time we're making a gray donkey. My original feeling was that donkeys were gray. So I'm making a gray donkey. And I put that, I put that, that uh, ink back over here again. Okay. We're going to stamp him the third donkey. He looks like a little Romeo donkey with a little rose in his mouth. Memento, because we're using Stampin' Blends. I'm not going to zoom in this time because I don't know what happened last time. It freaked me out. I don't want to do that again. Now, on Pinterest, there was a project somebody had done with the donkey, and I loved the way that she colored him. So I read, and he was very light. Notice how light he is compared to, say, this guy or this guy. So I read what she did, and she she colored them differently than me. She she went like this, she did light. And we'll do light down here on his legs. And around his, just kind of like outlining his face. And um, we'll do under his ears. And then take your dark and do even like less color, just a little bit, kind of dot, dot, dot. Do some of the hooves like that, a little bit in his ear, a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna do his hair too. A little bit there, a little bit there, just a tiny bit. And then she took her color lifter and pulled it all together with a color lifter. And I loved the way it looked. I didn't ever think about using the color lifter kind of almost as a blender. I hardly ever use my color lifter. So I liked that. See how he's just light? I don't know. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta watch what other people are doing. Do something different. Because that's not how I would have colored him had I not seen her project. Just a different way. All right, Old Olive for the flower. Um, Rococo Rose for the flower. All right. We're gonna fussy cut him one more time. Lots of fussy cutting. I, I wasn't able to do <laughs> too many projects without fussy cutting. Sorry. You know, you really could stamp him on the heart and not cut him out if you wanted. You could. All right, so I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white cloud around him and I'm gonna cut all this extra cardstock off. That really does help. All the way around, around and around. Oh, this is, we have a busy weekend. You guys, I haven't talked much about our rabbits. We have our 4-H rabbits this year and just one of the girls is doing rabbits this year and we've all just kind of over it. But uh, we have rabbit show tomorrow, so they'll be gone. It goes by so quick. We have basketball game, basketball practice. We have a tennis tournament. We have a senior photo meeting. I mean, it's like a crazy weekend. <sighs> I hate weekends like that. When, once the sports start, man, things get crazy. All right, there we go. Almost there, almost there. All the way around his cute little towel. The artist whoever drew these donkeys, she did a great job. Or he, I don't know. 
but I think all of our designers are women, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. All right, there we go. Around, around, his little wobbly legs. Almost done. Mac is in here for those cookies, I think. He can hear a wrapper, any kind of wrapper, from like 10 miles away. Even a cello bag that I'm using to pack up card kits, he thinks, is food. And he will stand at the door and stare at me. <laughs> he is very food motivated, that one. Charlie could care less. Charlie just wants to bark and attack the door. He doesn't care about snacks. Mac wants snacks. Pepper's both. She likes to do both. All right, we're putting him on there with dimensionals. This is a heart from the, again, Be Mine Stitched Heart Dies. We're going to stamp the sentiment, again, from the donkey set on a word bubble, basic white. This is um, from the snail dies. I know, Donna, I know. It's hard, though, to remember that you'll miss it when you're in it, right? It's hard. I, I know, even when they were babies, I would tell myself that, but it's hard to enjoy it when you're in it. All right, hey there, friend. Let's put our box together. Hopefully we are dried enough. Get our little clothespins. These little clothespins are so cute. They're from Walmart. Or maybe the Dollar Tree, I'm not sure. Can't remember, one or the other. All right, I have cut the flower and field. You know, this flower and field DSP, I think, is pro well, I keep saying, I don't know. I would say it's probably my favorite thing in the catalog. Um, I have I haven't used it much. I need to I need to use it. So we'll be using that a lot next month. All right, so it folds down. Little clamshell closes just like that. I've got three pieces of the um, bumblebee polka dot print, and we will put them. You, I'm only doing three sides of the box, but if you want to do all four sides, go for it. The paper field and flower is free, also with a fifty dollar order. And it is totes adorbs. I love every single piece of it. Okay, put that one there. And then we've got a little square one to put on the end of the box where it opens. Oh my gosh, come on. Thanks, Kathy, for the share. I appreciate it. All right, now, belly band, this is uh, eight by one piece of bumblebee cardstock. And you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to do the belly band. I just feel like sometimes it kind of flares out there and I didn't like that. So I made a belly band and it makes it kind of cute, I think. A little, little something different. So just wrap it around. You don't need to score it. Just wrap it around and pinch those sides to match. And then put your adhesive on there like that so that it is gonna slide. Then, of course, once again, we have the ribbon, the bumblebee ribbon. And we're going to tie this around the belly band so it'll just, they won't have to untie it. They just slide that belly band off and the ribbon will go with it. There we go. Do, do, do. Like that. And last but not least, let's put our little donkey and heart and I'm going to sandwich that ribbon like that with some dimensionals so it'll just stay on there my printer is doing something weird I don't know if you guys can hear that it's like cleaning itself or something not the time quiet on the set okay there we go look and it slides I'm sorry but it's so cute right so cute you could change the colors and make it a valentine treat too if you wanted you could all right, what do you guys think? Three projects using all three donkeys. Now you know how to, to use all three of them. Um, I will send you the make and takes for free if you put your order in by Monday at midnight. Um, I will even send you the wire for the little wobbly guy. All right, make sure you hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com. Grab that PDF. And um, what else do I need to tell you? Next week, we will be doing the, I can't remember the name of it. 
Where's my catalog? I don't know. It's the it's the Valentine. No, it's this it's this sweet. The other one with the words. And I'm going to show you guys the gold leafing. You've been asking for it, and I'm going to show you how to use it. I have finally figured it out. <laughs> I had to play with it first. Um, but we'll do that next week. And next week will be all cards for my card makers, okay? And then after that, we will do all Valentine's projects. Okay, that's it for me, you guys. Thanks for being flexible today with the time change. I appreciate it. Um, thank you again to everybody who has been helping me with my million dollar sales achievement. I am very excited. I will do another drawing next week um, for the remaining two mini cut and emboss machines. Okay. All right. Let me know if you have questions. You guys have a wonderful and safe weekend. Thanks everybody. Bye.